Well, welcome to our webinar today. Uh, I'll just do a quick little introduction. My name is Patrick McMillan, and I am presenting from the Bench Jewelry and Metalsmithing Studio in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I, I'm sitting in what is now our new, um, our second classroom that we're just building out right now to have workshops later on this year. So it's nice to share, share some of the new space that we've got going on. Um, and what, while we're doing this webinar, I'm gonna try to keep a look in case anyone has questions. So welcome again to the three most important tools you should have find in every studio. Uh, this webinar is presented by Metalworks. Metalworks is a nonprofit uh, school and community studio in Waltham, Massachusetts that's been around for about the last 20 years a little bit more. It's a fantastic place. Um, I'm very thankful that they are helping us out with this presentation. And, you know, they're just up the road from me in Waltham, Mass, where you can go and kind of explore different tools, take different kinds of classes. They have a lot of things available to you either on site and virtually. And I'm going to talk about them a little bit more as we go on in the webinar. I also want to thank our sponsors today. Uh, a lot of the tools that we're using for this webinar are courtesy of GRS, Pepe Tools, and Sunstone Welding. So as we get started and go into this webinar, you'll start to see them pop up in the videos that I'll be showing shortly. And like I said before, my name is Patrick McMillan. I am a metalsmith jeweler based in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I did my studies in Nova Scotia College of Art and Design in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and did my master's in Birmingham, England at the School of Jewelry. Uh, about 12 years ago, I relocated here to Rhode Island, which has a really rich jewelry and metalsmithing history, uh, which really intrigued me. And so I was very excited to come here and I kind of enjoyed the community of all the jewelers and metalsmiths in my area. And I'm really happy to be a part of this webinar and kind of meeting a whole new group of folks from around the world and hopefully answering a lot of questions for you about any of these tools and things that we're doing later in the webinar. For this project that kind of incorporates a lot of these tools, I designed a pendant based on work I had done in the past, which includes working with fine silver sheet and doing some small stone setting and assembly work. So what you can see from this project that, you know, it's gonna include some hand piercing, some forming and rolling with a rolling mill, pulse arc welding, stone setting, and then some light filing and finishing. The format of this the, for the next hour is that we will be watching about four, we'll be watching four short videos uh, that go through the steps using some of the tools that are around me, our welder, the GRS Benchmate, Pepe rolling mill, and a few other accessories. And when the video ends, they're about eight minutes each. Uh, we'll have a little bit of time for any questions about what the experience was using them, how the benefited the process of building this piece. And then we'll move on to the next video. After the four videos are done, I'll be around for a while to answer any other questions that have come up. Or if you wanna see some close-up shots of any of the tools to kind of get a better look at what they are and how they fit together, I'm happy to show that. and. As always, if there's ever questions beyond this, you know, feel free to reach out to me or any of our sponsors. All right, so if we're all ready, I'm gonna go ahead and get the first video going right now. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Patrick McMillan from McMillan Metals and the Bench Jewelry and Metal Smithing Studio in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the three most important tools that you can have in your studio from a handful of sponsors we have today. And I'd like to thank Metalworks Jewelry School, Pepe Tools, GRS, and Sunstone Welders for helping us out to get all the tools we need to make our piece today at the bench. A lot of these companies have a lot of specialty tools that really help you out. And I'm gonna focus on a few, but also there are a few others that you'll see throughout the video that you'll be able to pick up if you're looking to invest in some alternative accessories for your bench space. Today, I'm gonna to be working on a pendant designed for this project, and it's based off of a lot of pieces I've done in the past using fine silver. I really find fine silver a great material to work with because it maintains such a nice bright white finish over time, but because it is a softer metal, you know, 
using the welder is quite like an advantage when you're doing your assembly pieces. So what we have here are the, you know, different pieces assembled in you know, different kind of methods with a band on the outside and a surface across the top. This piece that we're building today is going to be a pendant in the end, which will be a, about a two inch circle with a one three eighths opening and sleeve on the inside, giving a view to a reflective inside with a set in the outside and three stones set off to the edge. And the band in the center, just to keep it a nice light weight and low profile, will be about a quarter inch at the bottom and an eighth of an inch at the top. So as we begin, I'm going to go ahead and draw a stencil on my fine silver sheet to start cutting out one of the circles with a, a saw from Pepe Tools, the haymaker, and using a Benchmate bench pen from the Benchmate system. And later on, use some other Benchmate parts for uh, holding pieces steady and you know for filing and finishing later on. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my fine silver sheet and I'm going to be stenciling on a circle just using a little graphite pencil, mechanical pencil. Give myself a nice little line to follow with the saw. And while I'm sawing, I'm using the Benchmate bench pin, which is a nice removable piece with the GRS system. Yeah. And we're going to be cutting this piece out with uh, the Haymaker saw from Pepe Tools and using some of the nano blades. I've enjoyed using these. They keep a really sharp edge and if you want to preserve it longer, definitely use some of the Pepe lube that you have available with it. So get this set up, prep the blade, and always for, remember to have your safety glasses on. So, Let's get this going. All right, so we're just about halfway through. I'm just going to redress the blade a little bit and keep on going. All right, so now we're done cutting out the circle. Before I go through and dome it, I do want to dress the edge a little bit with a file. I can do a file holding this piece on the Benchmate bench pen uh, attachment, but I am going to just show how you can utilize this quick change out and switch over to the Benchmate Encore QC setup. Because this thing is just is designed to hold pieces steady and definitely when you're filing, Bits of your metal can chatter, squeal, move around, sliding on this flat surface. But you can quickly just pop this in, even though this is a little bit larger of a piece. It fits in there quite nicely. And I can grab my file, and I can see my where I have a few little inconsistencies. I can just dress the edge and smooth out those saw marks. Tighten that up just a little bit more. There we go. Give a nice little clean edge to that, to my sawing. And just moves around so smoothly. I really appreciate being able to adjust it and flip it around and file in the opposite direction. And then just quick unscrew of the bottom, turn it again. And just, that's it. Cool. All said and done. And now I'm done with this, this circle. We're gonna dome it up and then we're gonna sketch out the oval opening that will later have the sleeve inserted. 
All right, so next step I'm gonna do uh, for this pendant is I've, after I've filed and cleaned up the edge, I'm gonna be doming this to give both sides of the pendant a little bit of volume, and one of them will draw an oval onto it with another stencil to insert a small ring inside of it to just give a little bit more of an illusion of depth and thickness to the piece. So I'm using just a simple nylon mallet and we're just gonna hammer it out in this wooden dapping block. So. All right, looks good. And we're gonna finish up on the smaller dapping base. Now we have a nice little domed piece of fine silver. And some of this hammering is also work hardening it, which makes it really well for just handling and doing any other finish or you know, carving work. It's not gonna dent in as it would after it's freshly annealed. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna draw the oval stencil for the cutout in this piece. So I just have my little oval cutout right here, line it up nicely and quickly just have my little line made for the cutout. I'm gonna be using a flex shaft to drill a hole through this and then use my haymaker saw to cut out the insert. So I've already swapped this back out so that I can do some more sewing. So I have the bench pin attachment already in. Use a little of the Pepe lube on there. So now, the next step is just to thread our saw blade in to the piece. And we're still using the same saw blade from our initial cut, so. Try. This is just a number three, or, yeah, a number three nano blade. And now, just, Saw out this little answer. Okay. So I'm at the halfway point again, and I usually try to dress the saw blades with a little bit more lubrication, just keeping this blade sharp so I can use it throughout the whole piece. Uh, yeah, we're going to just continue to cut the back end of this oval shape, and then we'll be all set to file it out and get it ready to fit the, uh, the sleeve that goes inside. There we go. And now we have our cutout. And just undo that blade. And now we're all set for filing and evening out the inside of this opening. So the next step in this process is I'm gonna be making the insert for the pendant piece. The stock that we're using for the, the circles I just cut out were a 20 gauge stock. It's a little bit thicker than what I want for the insert part of the, of the oval. So I'm gonna be taking this little strip of 20 gauge fine silver and rolling it down to about half of that. So about 0.4 millimeters or 24 gauge. Um, I'm using my Pepe rolling mill. This is a combination 160 millimeter wide. And it's really nice because it has about a three inch flat face for rolling out sheet, but also comes with a whole bunch of sizes for rolling out square wire and even half round wire for any kind of bezels or ring stocks. So, so let's go ahead and get this set. I'm gonna just pinch it, get it ready. And we're gonna just slowly Bring it down. All right. I'm just going to check the measurement. We're at about 0.6. So we're going to do another little step down and really draw this out. So 
So now I've got a little bit thinner piece at 0.5, so this is good for, for what I need. I'm gonna kneel it really quick, and then we're gonna cut and begin making our oval insert. So I was, um, first round I, uh, steps I took for building this piece, it was, uh, I touched on a lot of tools, and I do want to mention them, but I just saw a few questions that popped up. Um, I see someone got answered. It was 20 gauge uh, fine silver that I rolled down to about half a mil in the end. So I, I picked up a couple of these tables. Um, these are Ikea kitchen carts and they are surprisingly solid. Um, most of my rolling mills don't sit much higher than about 32 inches. Um, I know some probably will be a little bit more, but with these rolling carts, I think these are about 32 inches high. And as long as everything's bolted up really well, they are, you know, it's pretty solid. This one's the older one, so it seemed a little bit rickety on the, I think when I was trying to rolling out, rolling out that fine silver. Um, let's see, where did, the doming block, uh, that was one I believe I acquired from uh, Rio Grande. Um, it's, it's nice, I've used it for a handful of other projects and it's, the wood is a really nice hardwood. I, it's held up against quite a bit of uh, hammering over the last few months since we've had it in the studio. But so just kind of a recap over what we were, what I was doing in there. I was using quite a number of tools and, you know, one of the big things was the, the Benchmate QC uh, stone set. It's particularly the stone setter package because it comes with a few other um, parts to it, which I'll talk about in a later video. But it was really handy having this like quick release I think I've tightened mine down so it didn't move as much, but just a quick little turn. Loosens it up, top off, and move to the next one. I, you know, typically I've always had my bench pins mounted and then use maybe a graver ball on a little stand, but this is certainly something when you're jumping between different tools, it's really, really handy. Um, well worth their investment, uh, especially if you do have multiple steps like I had in that where I had some things that were great for sawing on a flat surface, while other times I need something to kind of hold the piece steady. And of course, like I was also using the, um, just a haymaker saw from, and I think Chris caught it earlier on, uh, from Pepe Tools. Uh, this has been nice. I got this a while back and surprisingly, this is kind of like one of my favorite features of it is the fun balancing act that you get to do. But it's lightweight, um, which I find I do tend not to feel the fatigue that I used to have with my my steel saw frames, which I still love. I still have them in the studio and I use them on occasion. But it's, you know, for this, I, you know, I just realized when I'm doing quite a lot of sawing, it does help out with that. Uh, let's see, Lindsay, where did I get the hammer from? Honestly, I think that Domed Hammer was a Harbor Freight purchase uh, years and years ago. Um, it's not as durable as some of the like high density like plastic hammers that you typically get from jewelry supply. Uh, I actually had to go back and really like file and sand it down to like clean up the surface because all it picks up dings a little bit easier. But you know, very affordable, something you can get. Uh, pretty much locally, I think, anywhere you are. So um, finally, I guess, yeah, a few other things that we had in the this one were the nano blades, which these have been fun. And I have to say this little bit on the part, I don't always remember what size blade is ideal for my metal. And on each one of these packet actually gives you a good list of what it is ideal for. So something if you don't keep it on your mind, in your mind all the time or have a sticker kind of placed around just to remind you it's always on the packages with these guys so right now we've gotten through the first part um just kind of assembling some of the pieces now we're going to move or building the pieces now we're going to move to some of the assembly work but well, we're going to go through the next video um our section two and then we'll kind of follow up and talk about the tools in there and answer any other questions you may have for the next step i've cut my 
insert uh, fine silver that's going to be a little oval shape and we're going to go through and we're actually going to weld the seam together just to avoid some over annealing of the fine silver itself and then afterwards I'm going to round it out into the oval shape and fit it to the cutout that we did in the dome piece. So what we're using today is Orion 150S from Sunstone Welding. So this is a model I've used for a number of years um, and I really enjoyed this. Uh, it's a great piece and it has a great amount of like power availability so you can do a lot of custom settings. And if you're ever interested in some of these tools, what's really great is that Metalworks, all the things that we worked with today from GRS and from Pepe and Orion's uh, welders, they're all available at the Metal Metalworks Jewelry School for workshops or schedule private lesson time and anything like that. So, you know, if you're ever curious about it, you know, definitely reach out to them to see what kind of classes they have available. First, I'm going to make sure to clip my piece with the ground. So now I'm completing the circuit for the welds. And we're just going to kind of approach this little tungsten uh, electrode tip. And that's basically where I'm going to be following through the microscope. So we're just going to run along the seam and just make a handful of welds and fuse this together. Everything looks good on that side. I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna run it along the inside and just jump the power up just a little bit so that seam is welded all the way through. I can really hold this super close to the weld spots and really keep everything nice and accurate. All right, that's it. We've got a nice welded fine silver sleeve. Now time to round it out. Nice little fitting all the way around. Have our weld from before. We hammered it so it's nice and burnished. It has a nice like smooth finish so when I go in and sand it, it's going to blend it in really well with the rest of the surface. I have a nice little near flush edge on the top and bottom so what I'm going to do is tack everything in place on these areas where the, the edges are flush to the surface of the dome. And then I'm going to go and file off the excess material on the lower portions and then finish the weld all the way around. And this will secure this insert into the top piece of the pendant. The next step that I'm going to do afterwards, similar to the insert, is this is the outside edge of the piece. And this outside edge is just going to wrap around the perimeter of the front and the back. And then we're just going to weld the edges together, round it out on the anvil stake, and then just blend, in, blend the weld so it looks like a seamless ring. And that'll be it. And then we'll assemble the whole piece together in the last stages with the Orion Pulse Arc welder. <laughs> Since we're using a roughly 20 gauge sheet and a trim that is an insert that's around 24 gauge, I am going to bring the power up just a little bit more to about 20. So I can really get a weld that penetrates between the two and actually fuses the surface entirely. All right, so go ahead and clip that on right there. That's it, time to file. Everything's secured on the top and the bottom right here. So now I can move, remove all this excess material on the top and bottom of this or these sides of the oval. Started up here for the initial tack and now we're just slowly wrapping around 
the bottom edge to weld this fine silver into place. That's it. Everything's welded. Right now I've completed all the weld on the, the ring that's been inlaid inside this dome piece. I'm going to use a just a hand homemade tool. It's just a bent uh, nail with a polished edge and a curve in it to help compress the weld and help harden the weld area. You know, I try to do this as much as possible when I'm using the Orion welder uh, just so that this slightly annealed area stays fixed. If I can't access it, it's not a big deal, but you know, when you have the chance, it's always helpful. And I'm going to be using the Benchmate Encore QC as a support, and it'll help me like just bend this around and move it, and the curved side of this is good to support the curved surface of this pendant. I'm all done uh, using the little flex shaft tool. So you can see like my weld area is a nice like compressed and polished little ring. I can take a file and now go around and blend it in so it looks seamless all the way around and still just making good use of the GRS Benchmate to like support it as we go. Either the Encore or the bench pen would be suitable for this. <coughs> I've cleaned up the weld area around here and you'll notice that I do have a few little spots of porosity from the weld. This is not a big problem. It's very easy to go back to the pulse arc welder and use either uh, some scrap material that you were using to from what you're building with or some nice fine wire of the same material. I typically use a 30 gauge so I can do just small fills and then go back and just follow the same cleanup process. And that's what's really great about with the Orion welders, pulse arc welders, is that you know, not only can you fill in the porosity from your welds, you can also do some porosity filling on your castings. You just don't wanna have the same materials, so you can go around and spot fill rather than having to fill with solder or any other kind of material in your piece. I'm gonna just fill this little spot There we go. And just one little surface weld to even it out. Yeah, all done. Welcome back. Uh, I've seen some questions popping up. I just want to address those real quick. Uh, yeah, the Orion Pulse Arc Welder from Sunstone is yeah a big part of that section because it is something I do use a lot in the studio for assembly repairs and, you know, whether it's just tacking for soldering or if it actually is for just full assembly like I was doing in the video. So uh, let me just double check. Um, I think some of the questions were addressed, uh, the power settings. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, I was being a little modest with some of the power on this, um, primarily just uh, because of the edging of the pieces. So when I'm actually welding two edges together, I can have a higher uh, weld power in the center of the seam, but once I get to the edges and you start welding around there, you do have to drop it back a bit so that you don't ball up or sink in the material because those two little corners just want to kind of pull away or thin out. So I was using uh, 16 watt seconds, I think, for the 24 gauge, and then I bumped it up to 20 watt seconds for the 20 gauge. I still just made sure to go on both sides like I said, I was being a little modest with it, uh, just to ensure that the weld penetrated through the entire piece of metal, because if you do have an unwelded area next to a weld, it just like with a piece of paper with a slight tear, you know, it becomes a weak point and too much stress could cause it to open up. So it's, let's see. Uh, why would you weld instead of soldering? Uh, this piece in particular, 
because it's fine silver, fine silver is extremely soft. Uh, I do enjoy working with it, which means that I do spend a lot of time work hardening it through hammering, texturing, you know, anything I can so that it structurally, structurally holds up. If I had to solder it, a lot of that structure would kind of disappear and make it very susceptible to dings and bumps um, just from general handling. So I, I'll show a few of these later, but I have some smaller pieces that are related to the same series. And these are all 30 gauge fine silver, which makes them, you know, extremely lightweight, but also, you know, I hammered and like textured a little bit on the underside, keeping the top side a little bit flat and smooth. And it helped avoid that. Um, like I said, it depends on the piece, whether you would actually, you know, prioritize a lot of welding or just partial welding. But with these pieces, I do kind of have to engage a full weld like situation just so that the metal doesn't get too soft. Uh, let's see. Uh, protect from the radiation hands and face. So when you're doing your welding, you do get a small arc. Um, they are very tiny. Um, your eyes are protected through the shielding. Uh, there is a shutter inside of the microscope. And if you don't have a welder with a microscope, they have a, a shield that comes with the smaller model that acts just like a welding shield does and prevents any of those, like, I think it's, I'm not sure which uh, ultraviolet light that kind of comes off of that. Uh, but I've been using this welder for six years and it's, you know, even when I spend like an afternoon welding, there is nothing that happens. It's not the same kind of um, exposure that you'd have with like a TIG welder or MIG welding. Those produce a way more uh, ultraviolet light uh, in the grand scheme of things. Um, and yes, they, these tend to be more, a lot more affordable than uh, the laser welders that are out there. Um, let's see, we have any other questions? Yes, my torch does miss me sometimes, Joseph. <laughs> uh, what is the learning curve for a welder? Um, that is that was something that you know in the beginning you kind of have to build a project that pushes you to explore the welder. I did a lot of pieces in different materials to test things out. So it was, I would say if you, there's a lot more resources now than when I first got the welder. Um, and I spent probably three months tinkering with it, trying to find projects that really I could incorporate with it. I would just say the one thing I told everybody is that I haven't started a jump ring in six years. I've managed to <laughs> get away with just doing all my jump ring assembly on this welder really quickly for myself and for clients who come in and bring me work to uh, help them because they have things near soft stones or any other objects that just can't be near a torch. Yeah, Chris, you're a quick, a quick learn. Um, you know, Orion has a lot of online videos that help get you through it. And, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff online that if you ever had questions, you can always reach out. Tainted welds. Um, so tainted welds, it, there is a practice of just keeping um, clean electrodes on hand. Uh, Electrodes do start to dull and depending on your material, sometimes you do need um, some some extra, you know, attention to like the material. The electrodes being really sharp, they wear down, you take them off. I have my little cordless uh, grinder. This little Dremel tool is, I put a little cap on it so I can help angle it a little bit better. And this, you know, I pop it out, do a quick little cleanup of all the stuff. It's, you start to have it happen less and less with more practice, but there are certain materials that will cause more, um, more issues and give you weld bits. Uh, things like brass with all the alloys that are in them can be somewhat problematic. Oh yeah, and like I said, I'm trying to answer all the questions as best I can. Um, if I do miss something, uh, please feel free to just like put it into the chat a second time. I'm, yeah, there's a lot of messages coming in on my end, but they, you can also message towards the end or email me directly. I'll have my email up at the end. 
like I said, I have the welder right here. Um, I'll show a little bit of demos of it later on. It's been a huge addition to my studio. Like I said, I've had for six years. This is actually the second model that I've had uh, from the 150. I had their first generation and then I updated to the current one that they're offering. Who makes my cordless grinder? Uh, it's Dremel, Dremel company, uh, a Home Depot purchase. I think it is a, yeah, the 8220. And the grinding bit that's in it came with the welder and I basically had the same one for the last six years. Uh, they do last quite a while. In this third part, um, we're gonna be using some more GRS tools. Um, a few things, uh, a few accessories that I found really helpful uh, that go along with the, the Benchmate QC. Getting to the next phase of this where we're gonna be using, we're gonna be setting stones into the finish uh, top piece before we weld everything together. So through this we've been using the Benchmate Encore QC uh, stone setting package uh, Benchmate set system. So through the start we've used just the clamp to hold our piece steady and firmly while we filed, sanded, did any kind of hammering work with the flex shaft. But now what you can do is you can take this piece out And this comes out pretty quickly by turning this handle on the underside. And this top piece is interchangeable. So we're just gonna pop this out, so over here. And what we have, the other parts of this stone setting package is a horizontal mount for your rings. a vertical mount. So each of these utilizes these little inserts to hold different rings of different sizes and allows you to do stone setting at least across the surface of the ring or on the edge of the band. Today we're, gonna, we're not doing a ring setting but we're going to be setting into the surface which means we're going to use an extra piece that you can buy outside of this package which is the Thermalock shellac pad. So we're going to make sure to lock this in and we're going to slide it down into there and this way we can actually set a very like unique shaped piece into this pad and have it hold it while we do our stone setting. So Thermalock is a plastic that actually starts out as these bars and you can use a microwave or hot water or heat gun to soften them and make them malleable and then prep them into whatever surface, whether it's a board or a cup like this one. Now that I've had this mounted in, I'm gonna to have to use a heat gun to soften it up, press my piece in and then let it cool so that I'll be able to approach it and mount and set my stones using a drill bit and some burrs. The Thermalock is set. You can see I have my piece wedged in there. I have it pressed up against the inside of the bezel and wrapped over the edge of the fine silver. This helps hold everything in place so I don't have to worry about this jiggling or moving around. And I've marked my three spots where I'm going to do three small two and a half millimeter flush set stones. So while we get this started, I'm going to just start with this one. I'm going to drill the hole, burr out the material, and then set the stone. I don't want to have my drill bit skip across the surface. So I'm just going to make a nice little indent for it to fall into on all of these. You can also just use a center punch. I'm just using a scribe. Get your Pepe Burr, Pepe Lube. So I'm just stepping up to the next drill bit just to remove a little bit more material. Now, this is the 2.5 burr. Let's just dust this off, get any excess material out of the way. So let's get this. Right. 
So I pretty much carved out. Now it's a good time to start testing the fit. I'm going to use a little brass pusher and a little drop of oil just to hold on. There we go. Push that into place. And this is a good time where I would get my optivisors to really view uh, the stone sets. So now that I have my optivisors on, so I can really look up close and examine the stone set area. Really before, I, you know, as I'm doing this test fitting, just making sure, you know, it's where I want it to be. So I can really push down, this thermolock's really supporting the fine silver curve surface, so I can really make sure this piece and this stone is pressed in and kind of cutting into the wall of the setting. Nice flush feel. And then use my little burnisher to go around the edge. It's super convenient to be able to rotate this into so many angles. Especially with this curved surface because then I can really make my setting tool fall in the right direction as I burnish this metal and not have to contort my hand too much. That feels good. Cool. At this point I've completed all the parts for this pendant. Uh, one piece that I did off screen was this polished back piece uh, where I just like just like the front I domed it and then I polished the inside, sanded, cleaned it up, and then drilled two holes to pass the chain through. Um, the reason why you know, this is, I did all of this before I finished the welding is because I have access to this dome surface completely with a polishing wheel. So I was able to take it up to a high mirror finish, and now I can weld everything together, and those welds will not impact the polished surface. There's minimum temperature change to maybe the edging, but other than that, you won't see it because the window that I designed for this will obscure some of that edging. But for the most part, the welds don't rise the temperature, raise the temperature high enough to like alter the polish look. So let's stack these three together and start welding them. First step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach the back to the rim. And I am just going to do some tacks around to hold everything in place and make sure it doesn't move. All right, top, flip around to the back side. Side one, all done. So we've gotten through the majority of the assembly and kind of the pre-finish to the piece. Um, I saw a few questions popping up through the chat. I uh, just want to make sure I uh, kind of address those while I have a minute. Um, so uh, one of the questions was what kind of heat gun uh, and Scott answered that it was a light gun, which I, have it right here because I thought people might be interested. And that this goes well above the temperature necessary for um, melting the, the thermal lock. But it does make short work of it. And, you know, especially when you can't throw something into a microwave anymore, that's only a, for the first step in which you actually set it onto your board or onto your pitch cup, which. Um, just to kind of address some of the accessories that come with this Benchmate. So while I didn't use them in this, this demo, uh, they do come, this Benchmate came with these vertical and horizontal ring holders. And you kind of see how they get set on there. Um, they're really securely <laughs> set, which means you can really kind of put a lot of pressure, really, you know, put the elbow grease in to like set your stones. If you got really, uh, bear down on the metal. The accessory that I got, I picked up for 
the Benchmate uh, was the pitch cup. And then I put the Thermalock inside. And you can still see I still have the uh, remnants from when I did the setting the other week uh, for the videos. This, uh, someone asked a question in comparison to Jet Set. I've used both. I'm, I found Jet Set like really great for like creating like makeshift handles for files and other objects. Uh, it, it's a lot denser when it cools down. Uh, but the, the great thing about the Thermalock is that it does have a little bit of give. So when you're pushing, uh, similar to like certain pitches, um, this is, cleans up a lot nicer, but it does have just a little bit of give. So you're not kind of like having to fight the material behind your metal. Um, and it cleans off really easily. I heated up the piece just very gently and then pried off the little bit of the edge that was around it and what I had on the inside. And then whatever stuck to the piece just flaked off once it cooled and I was able to just tack it onto the surface so I can really reclaim everything and not have to worry about it too much afterwards. Um, and this is available uh, from GRS, uh, both this extra accessory and the Thermalock. Um, and with your inside ring holders, I it comes with the two sets of sizes. I'm just going to show off my little... 3D printed like holder because they come in a bag, um, but I, I like to have things a little bit organized at my bench occasionally. Um, but you know, they come in different sizes, uh, starting from I think it was 23 millimeters down to 14. Uh, so you can fit pretty good range of rings. Let's see, how did you remove the thermalock? So I yeah I mentioned I just like uh, very gently heated up my piece. I didn't want to overheat it with the stones in there. Um, and then, yeah, the stone setting part was pretty quick. I just use a, a drill bit to, to cut the initial hole and a bulber, the 2.5 millimeter bulber, so it matched the stone size itself. And then I was able to just kind of pop it in and do a quick little burnish uh, flush set. And I'll show the tools from the video, which was a just a quick little burnishing needle made from an old drill bit and a brass pusher. Yeah, you know, just made from stock brass. You make buy this. Oh, uh, the three. I printed this one. I just modeled this up just to hold uh, my pieces. I, you know, a lot of these tools come with some extra accessories, and they tend to you know sit in their box or their bag. And I wanted to have a little bit something that I could have it out and pull it out and hold it steadily and remember what sizes they were, so I'm not fishing through. Um, my boxes I get in the store and my bench. So yeah. So so we've gotten through a lot. We, you know, kind of went back to the QC, the Benchmade QC, used some of the add-ons to that. And then I have some of my custom tool. You could make one with the Thermalock, you know, if you wanted to press it in and just have it um, it sticks to a board fairly well with a little bit of texture on it. Um, and then you can have it set aside and hold your piece. You just want to make sure that it's kind of angled out and not gripping your your ring inserts. Yeah. So we've got one last video to kind of touch on all the tools that we used in the video. And once that's done, I'm going to be around to answer any additional questions and show you some of the tools. I have another camera set up here for the welder. I also can sh show you the rolling mill and a few of the other Pepe tools that we talked about and, you know, and answer any other questions about GRS stuff. So I'm going to just go to our last video and then we'll hopefully have a bunch of questions and just talk about tools some more. All right. See you in a bit. We've completed the weld for the back piece to the rim and now we're going to be attaching the front. So we have our nice contained hollow piece and we're going to start same way we did before, we're going to tack it in place all around in a few spots and then fill in the weld the rest of the way and then we'll be set to start cleanup on the weld surface. All right, flip it around, get the back side open. And I don't have a place to clip to so I'm just holding the alligator clip to the surface. Everything's all lined up, so now I'm just going to follow a bead all the way around this side and then all the way around the opposite side.
the edge of this piece. I went back in and spent a little time just compressing the metal using a flex shaft and a burnishing tool or you, know, you can also use a little hammer hand piece and then sanded everything down to help give it a nice like finished edge so we have a little crisp edge on all the way around and the side wall is actually nice and flat so it's blended in the weld really well similar to what we did on the inside trim this was this is really great i i really enjoyed making this piece and it was extremely helpful having all the tools that we've talked about today we've we did do a lot and I just wanted to go through and really talk about how important it was to have these tools so that we could kind of have these extra options in building pieces that may be a little bit more complex or unique. So when we began this, we started with the Pepe saw, the Haymaker saw, and some nano blades. I really enjoy the saw. I've had it for a while. It's been a great addition to my studio. It, it's really lightweight, so it's just taken giving me a lot less effort to have to actually do my sawing. I don't get weighed down when I have to do excessive sawing or piercing on sheet metal. And it also has a good balance to it. These nano blades have been wonderful. I, I find that they just maintain a good sharpness to them, and especially if you're using the Pepe Lube. We only use just the one blade for this piece without any issue. They're very true. I find great consistency with their sharpness. So it was great to start this project up using this to fabricate and cut out all the parts to this to this pendant. You know, once we had things cut out, we had to start doing some refinement to the work and GRS's quick uh, benchmate Encore QC, the one we use today was uh, the stone setting package. So while we primarily use the clamp uh, accessory that comes with it. It also comes with an inside and a vertical inside and a horizontal inside ring man, uh, holder. So it allows you to do stone setting on the sides of ring bands or along the circumference of them. While we didn't use those, I did pick up an extra accessory that helped me do my stone setting on this piece. So we had this dome and in order to really support it, I needed to actually have it backed with a material. So with this cup accessory for the Encore Benjamin, I was able to pack it with uh, GRS's Thermalock. And this stuff softens up, becomes extremely malleable with just a heat gun. Um, you know, if you're doing it fresh, you can use a microwave or, you know, or hot water. But for this, we just use a heat gun quickly warmed it up, able to tack it down and roll the edge, made it very quick for me and also just once it cooled I was able to set these stones knowing that with this fine silver even though I'm putting a good amount of pressure just to make sure I get that nice flush set, you know this was giving all the sport it, it needed because you can still see a little bit of the curve back here. So and once I was done I was able to warm up the piece slightly enough to pull it out and anything that was kind of stuck to the back side of it, once it cooled down, just flaked off and I just kind of tapped back onto this. And the last thing I also used with this uh, Benchmate was the bench pin accessory that came with it. It just was really quick to kind of jump between these two with this, with its mount. So, you know, when we were doing the sewing or any kind of light work, we were able to use our bench pin. And then once we needed something to hold the piece really steady and jump to the encore, we were able to pop that off and throw this on. So really enjoyed that just quick accessory change for the GRS series. And with some of the fabrication, after we were filing, we also used the Pepe rolling mill. I really enjoyed this combo one because it gives us all the options for the wire. We primarily just use it for today to roll out and thin uh, the wall, the inside wall of this. So I didn't have to have such a thick piece and have that extra weight on it. So we just managed to go through it really quickly. But if I had thought to, you know, consider some different profiles of metal, I could utilize the half round section of this, which was would be a nice little touch and you know, as I do more of these kind of pieces it'll be great to add that into it. Finally the, all the assembly was done using the Sunstone's Orion Pulsar welder. 
I've had this particular model for about six years and as usual it just it makes assembly really simple you know starting with tacking it together to make sure all the parts are in alignment and then just finishing a weld all the way around the edges and it's really nice because while with fine silver I don't risk over annealing it with all the torch work and soldering with this I don't I just weld it together, all the work hardened surfaces remain rigid enough so that this piece actually has some good structural like parts to it and also the welded metal together it makes this piece look seamless you know with any kind of solder lines eventually you'll start to see a solder seam but with this welder it kind of takes that out so you can nice, have these nice seamless pieces or if you're working with repairs you know, you can blend that in really easily and then have a nice seamless part to your repair work using the metal that exists in the piece or using some additive metals from scrap or, you know, very thin wire. So, and finally, I, you know, I would want to thank all the sponsors for help, you know, being a part of this video, GRS, Pepe Tools, Sunstone Welding, and Metalworks. Metalworks is a school in Waltham, Massachusetts. It's a fantastic place. It, if you're curious about any of these tools, all of these tools are there at the school that people utilize during their workshops. They have a great selection of classes from stone setting to welding to intro to jewelry and they have master classes from all kinds of artists and they make use of a lot of these tools for those workshops. So if you're ever curious about learning more about these, you can also look up Metalworks to go and try them out, or you can contact GRS, Pepe Tools, or Sunstone to get more information about them. So thank you all for joining me. It was great having you at the bench in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and I hope to see you all again sometime soon. Thanks again. Thanks for sticking around, checking, the, checking out the final presentation of the piece that I made with the tools in the studio. Um, it was really fun. I saw a few questions pop up and I wanted to make sure to address them. Um, I saw back there, someone was asking about uh, sanding. I did do a little bit of sanding. It wasn't in the video. What you saw was a burnishing and like I said, uh, is a, just a, a a curved roofing nail that was polished and I just have it pretty much permanently set inside of this handpiece. Um, it helps compress the welds, hardens up the weld area. Uh, so when you ever build up a little bit extra material, it pushes it all down and makes the blending a whole lot easier. Um, we also had uh, cleaning the welder marks. Uh, part of that burnishing is that process to help clean it up. Um, I do have to occasionally go back in and do some spot welds to repair. I have a partial piece from another version of this, which I can show up in our next camera, but you can still see the little welder um, fills I did on this. And then lastly, I think uh, I think it was answered in the in the chat, but I do offer uh, on-site and virtual workshops for a welder to help people out. I've been doing that since uh, last year. Uh, Metalworks also has a set of, I think, three or four of the uh, different Orion uh, pulse arc welders. So you can get out there. They have their classes on occasion. You can check them out at metalworks.com. So let's see, I just want to make sure I answered all those questions. If I'd missed you, I'm sorry. I will try to answering more later on. Um, yes, and yeah, as Scott mentioned in the chat that if you are thinking of getting any of these, make sure to mention that you are here at our webinar today. Um, and there will be YouTube links up, I think, soon after this webinar has, is done. So you'll be able to go back and rewatch a fair amount of the information from my presentation and what we were discussing live during this. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, so I'm going to switch over real quick. I want to just make sure I, I have one last little bit of slides to show everyone just to kind of review all the tools that we use. 
in case you were interested in the, specifically any of the ones that were in this workshop. So from GRS, we had uh, the pitch cup, as I mentioned, the stone setter package of the GRS Benchmate QC. I did have the extra um, little shelf to hold the all my accessories for the inside for inside of the Benchmate, and then the Thermalock. So the Benchmate has quite a bit of stuff that comes with it. The horizontal and the vertical uh, ring mounts. It has a hand rest along with the pl mounting plate that you screw into your bench. So pretty much this package is complete. You get everything you need with it. Um, and then the, the one accessory I did get was that pitch cup. And the you'll see this in the video, but here's the actual product numbers so that you can find them a lot easier. And same for our storage strip, pitch cup, and thermalock. Also, thanks Pepe for their tools. We use their rolling mill, the combination 160, the haymaker saw, the nano blades, and Pepe Lube. Yeah. The combo ultra mill, um, it's a solid, it's, you know, as wide as it is, it's still pretty manageable to like move it around. It's only 60 pounds and it sits on this cart pretty well. You can also mount it directly to a table and, you know, make short work of a lot of metal sheet and wire. The other tools you have right here and their product numbers, Haymaker is just the Haymaker saw at the Pepe website. So, and then finally, it was the Sunstone. This is the welder I'm using. I'm gonna show it just a little bit with some of the sample works that were shown in the videos. But this is the Orion 150S Pulse Arc welder. Um, this one for me is fantastic because it has all these extras built in. So you know, while it has pulse arc, it has resistance welding, it has power settings from one to 150 in increments of 0.2 watt seconds. You know, it has a ton of material presets so you don't have to kind of explore everything too much. But if you want to tinker, you can, you, know, you can go to a gold setting, a platinum setting, a titanium setting. You know, you can save custom settings that if you do a lot of, you know, production work and you have one particular piece that just works well at a certain uh, wavelength and, you know, and a certain power level, you can keep that in there and just like jump back to it. I've certainly done that in the past. Um, you probably saw how fast some of the welds were going in the video. I use the continuous welding option a lot. Up, you know, it goes up to five per second. Um, smaller pieces, it warms warms the piece quickly, but on bigger things, um, if you're ever welding larger steel pieces, this is super handy to get to get through all the large weld areas. And you have a, a 5X microscope, which is not only good for the welding, but if you're ever needing to just check out your piece close up, it's just, I can't tell you how many times I just have it on so that I can check my stone sets after I'm done with them. So again, thank you all from here in Pawtucket, Rhode Island at the Ben's Jewelry Studio. Um, you're more than welcome to reach out to me uh, via email or on Instagram. You will have all this information later on after this webinar ends, but I hope to hear from you um, and answer any questions you may have. And also, once again, thank you to Metalworks, Pepe Tool, GRS, and Sunstone Welders. Um, while you know, I've talked a lot about them today and tried to answer as many questions, uh, a lot of you may be showing up at Snag in a couple of days and all these folks will be around uh, giving more demos and talking about their tools um, even more of what, than what we've shown today. So if you're at Snag, stop in, chat to them, get some more info. And I hope you uh, get to add some new and amazing tools to your studio. Uh, Donna, I see you're asking about the argon feed. It goes into the back of the welder, so it kind of stays out of the way um, from your machine. So I have in this little setup right here, which I'll turn the camera just a little bit. You can see the welder um, directly behind this table is an argon tank just strapped to the to the cart, and it you know 
easy to move. It's just a, I just utilize a, a B tank of argon. And for one welder, it lasts a fair amount of time, maybe in the busy seasons during like production, uh, like Christmas stuff, you, you know, holiday time. I tend to go through them a little bit faster, but so I'm going to switch my camera over. Uh, if you're still here, I can show off the piece that we made. Yeah, I just enjoy being able to do this because I can easily polish the inside and then weld everything together. And you know, the stones are securely held in place. You know, I'm not welding near them for this particular piece, but with the welder, you can do a lot of welding next to stones. I've definitely rebuilt prongs right next to diamonds. I've known folks that have welded next to softer stones. They usually just cover it with tape or with a little light, thin piece of leather. I hope to hear from you all at some point in the future and feel free to reach out to either me or any of our sponsors today to, to answer any of your questions, okay? Take care and have a good day.